I worked as an ETL developer and also managed a team before I went back to academia. Today I teach a course on data warehousing where I introduce the topic of ETL development. Of all the modules that I teach in that class, the section on ETL development is by far my favorite. I like ETL because it is the glue that holds data movement together. In case you're new to the topic of ETL, ETL just means extraction, transformation, and loading. It is a process for copying and moving data between different sources and destinations. In this video, I will show you how you can start on your journey to becoming an ETL developer. I'm going to go at it based on the assumption that you have no prior knowledge in databases or SQL. So all beginners are welcome. All right, so if you have no prior experience or education in database management or SQL development, there are three areas that you need to work on. Now, before I describe these three areas, here's a quick refresher about the role that ETL plays in the data management landscape or in the larger business intelligence architecture. ETL sits in the middle between the source data and the destination database. ETL plays a major role because it enables organizations to integrate and prepare data from different data sources into a destination that allows them to use the data for analysis or decision making. ETL developers are responsible for creating those processes that copy and move data from different sources to designated destination. ETL is part of data engineering, which is also part of the bigger business intelligence architecture. Please watch my Who is an ETL developer to learn more about this role. Okay, so back to the three steps to becoming an ETL developer. The first is understanding the basics of databases and SQL. So this should take you about one week or about one hour a day to accomplish. So you may need about five hours in total. You will need to choose the type of database that you want to align with because there's so many available. Now for a beginner, your choices may be Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle Database, or MySQL Database. Microsoft SQL Server is a great choice because it is available for free for the developer edition. You can download and install the developer edition, which is in fact the enterprise version. It also has good documentation and there are many job opportunities that are tied to Microsoft SQL Server. Oracle is another good choice. The only difference is that the database language is slightly different. It uses PL SQL. MySQL is also a good option. While MySQL is known for its simplicity and widespread adoption, you may not find as many opportunities with this skill as you will with its uh, Microsoft counterpart. Now, your choice of databases will determine the course or the training that you will take. You can access these trainings in Udemy, in Coursera, or Microsoft Learn to find the specific courses based on the database of your choice. Microsoft Learn does offer, at least for now, some free courses. The second part is to become very familiar and gain hands-on experience with the database management system and also with SQL language. Python will come in very handy here. Python is a great skill to understand and to know, but let's do first things first. We can learn Python a little later. Given my prior recommendation for Microsoft SQL Server, let's focus on it for a bit. Learning it will take you about three weeks to learn the core, and those three weeks of about one hour a day. Now, this is bearing in mind that you have other activities that you perform or that you currently have a job. So you could dedicate about 15 to 20 hours to learn this step. You will need to download Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. You can download SQL Server Developer Edition from the Microsoft website. Now see the link in the details below. In terms of cost, SQL Server Developer Edition is free. This edition includes all SQL Server features and is used in the development and, and testing environment. 
environment. So it's ideal for you to use in learning. You can access Udemy, Coursera, or Microsoft Learn to find specific courses to guide your learning on SQL Server Management Studio. Here are core things to learn aside from what you learned at the very beginning in step one. You will need to learn how to create tables. That's a given. You'll need to learn how to create indexes. You'll need to learn how to create and work with and become very good in working with stored procedures, creating stored procedures. You will need to know joins. You will need to know functions and also how to optimize queries. In all of these, you need to be able to coherently describe how to solve a business problem using database code. This is where your problem solving and your critical skills play a major role, especially in today's AI-powered world. The third step is to learn ETL. That's why you came here. So you need to have completed steps one and two for step three to make sense. In this step, you will need to choose a specific ETL tool. There are so many out there like Informatica, like Talent, and SSIS. We can choose SSIS since it is part of the Microsoft SQL Server database software and is tightly integrated with SQL Server Management Studio that you learned in step two. Now, an SSIS means SQL Server Integration Services. You can access and install SSIS by visiting the Microsoft SQL Server downloads page you can access the link in the description below. Find the tool section when you get to that page and choose SQL Server Data Tools, which is SSDT, which integrates with Visual Studio. You can download SSDT from Visual Studio Marketplace. Make sure to follow the directions correctly to install this software. After you've installed SSIS, you're now ready to start learning the skill. You can acquire these skills quickly by accessing Microsoft Learning Resources. Again, see the link in the description below. Most of the time, these learning resources are free. It should take you about three to four weeks of about one hour a week to gain the core skills you need to be confident in your abilities. Now that's about 15 to 20 hours of learning. Now this doesn't mean that you have everything and that you're now an expert in SSIS and ETL, but it does give you enough that you feel comfortable saying to someone, I can do this stuff. It does give you enough that you can put it in your resume to say that you can do this stuff. Now, that's about 45 hours to become a junior ETL developer. So five hours for step one, 20 hours for step two, and 20 hours for step three. This is minimum. Of course, you can add more. Do you think you can do it? Of course you can. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get it done. Don't forget to subscribe to learn more. Thanks.